Hey everybody, it's ED.Gamer coming at you with another quick video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing, setup, and initial impression of the AnchorMake M5 3D printer. For a company that usually makes power bricks, cables, and docks, it's interesting to see Anchor take on a 3D printer. I was skeptical at first, but I thought, hey, this printer boasts some really interesting features, so I thought I would give it a try. So let's go over the unboxing and see what you get inside the Anchor M5. The box came very well packaged. There's a lot of foam in here, and the foam actually serves more than one purpose, as you'll see in a minute. It comes in different layers when you first open it. So you get a power plug. This is the spool holder to hold the filament for printing. All the different screws you're going to need for assembly. a starter roll of white filament. This is the print head that's actually on the second layer. Anchor was nice enough to give us a little tool case that you can utilize to trim your filament and actually put the device together as well as some other items such as an extra print nozzle. And of course, the very thick manual. Looking at the next layer, you get a better look at the gantry itself. This is the part that sits on top of the base that does the printing of the items you'd like to create. Looking on the right, you have the display which shows you your print progress, the extruder as well as the print nozzle, and the filament sensor and LED status indicator. And as you can see, labeling of the cables makes it real easy. The last layer houses the print base itself, and it's pretty sizable because it can accommodate a 235 by 235 by 250 millimeter print volume. That's pretty big. And the base is heated so that you can easily use the magnetic print base and pop your prints off easily. So let's assemble. The first thing we need to do is to flip over the base and pop off this access panel. This will allow us to gain access to the different wires we'll need to hook up. The cool thing about the packaging is that the styrofoam actually serves as a method of holding the gantry to put the base on. So you don't have to mess around with having two people hold the gantry sideways while you slide the base into place. All right, let's put it together and we'll check the instruction booklet for this part. And the cool thing is the instruction booklet may look thick, but it's just in multiple languages. So after you feed the wires through, you're gonna be presented with a left and right plug that are USB-C style that you actually have to plug into the base. And that makes it nice and sturdy. So let's plug the other wires into the two sides of the gantry that stick through the base. Although it's difficult to see, everything's clearly labeled. The right and left plugs are labeled on the base and the wire themselves. Multiple screws are needed for this process and you can use the included toolkit to put everything together. And after you plugged everything in, Anchor provides you with notches for wire routing to keep everything neat and tidy. Believe it or not, this is the hardest part of the install. And once this is done, we put the plate back on the base and we're ready to finish up. And there's one last thing to install, and that's the spool holder. You have two options for this. First, you can put it up on the top, or secondly, you can put it on the bottom with it protruding from the side. I chose this method because I feel that it will feed the filament into the machinery more directly. Next step is to power it on and let's go through the initial setup. The power button is found in the back of the unit. On top of the area housing the screen, there is a USB-C port that you can utilize to transfer files for different prints directly to the unit. Of course, you can still use the Wi-Fi network to connect remotely and transfer your prints that way. 
So make sure you get the Anchor Make app on the App Store or the Google Play Store because this is what you're going to use to be able to monitor your print and to apply some separate settings as well as set your printer up to your home network. You'll then have to do an auto leveling session and this will make sure that your printer is level for all the prints you're going to be doing in the future. And after that process is done, you'll be greeted with the main menu of the printer and we're ready to go. Be sure to check for firmware updates. So let's print something. I'm gonna use the filament that came with the device and we just feed it through the sensor. which will follow a tube that goes to the extruder and you'll need to press a button on the top of the extruder to get the filament down to the print head. The device comes with a test model preloaded into the system memory. One of the reasons that I decided to buy this printer is not only just the good reviews, but the speed. True, the faster you set the print speed, the more quality reduction you'll have in the final print. A lot of people who have reviewed this unit say that 3X seems to be the sweet spot for speed and accuracy. This test print takes a look at many features of the printer, such as overhangs, XY resonance, Z-axis alignment, angles, as well as stringing between the spires. I think this did a great job overall and I couldn't be happier with the result. So that's my quick unboxing and initial impression and setup of the AnchorMake M5 3D printer. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Please follow me on social media, ed.gamer on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, as well as Facebook and others. And check out my podcast, The Modern Boomers with my good friend Damo, where we do interviews, review games, and everything else that has to do with men's lifestyle. Have a good one, guys.